All right, and welcome back to Moon's Remorse. This is uh, session number eight, uh, Starlit Field. At the end of last session, the group had um, had a series of unfortunate events um, occur to them um, during the investigation of the Bellhood Lair. Uh, they uh, triggered a trap um, that exploded and nearly killed everyone in the group. Um, Fortunately, they were able to pull themselves up, but not without being enc not without encountering the assassin who had recently killed the um, other assassin back in the town of Squalo. The assassin got away due to the currently <laughs> less than healthy state of the heroes. Um, they rested up a bit and eventually found that there was a prisoner still left behind inside of the um, inside of the camp or inside of the 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 cave. Um, that person was an individual named Sano Jiro, who apparently Jun had some history with. After a strange um, back and forth conversation, the um, individual named Sano Jiro um, beat the crap out of Jun and escaped the group um, to go and find his missing sword. The group, again, beat up again, uh, left the, um, the camp to go back to their own camp um, and have basically come to the decision that tracking the assassin is of utmost importance at this point and uh, they are doing that so I leave it to you it's about midday um, if I recall correctly and uh, you guys have returned to the northern side where um, you've met back up with Lance and um, um, Boren and Boren seems to be in better spirits than he was earlier today. I'm just limping around. Like, are are we going back to town? What's the plan here? Keep wanting to call him Mercer, but it's not his name. Um, this Hunter crossbow guy. Morris. Yeah, if Morris can lead the way, then uh, we can get on the road and start tracking down this assassin. He's been, uh, I don't think he'll have recovered from his wound if he's kept moving, so. Yeah, I can help. I can help you guys. We can definitely track him, like I said. Um, doesn't look like this store's gonna slow me down too much, but I'll let you know if we're gonna travel on a large pack like this, it's gonna be a problem. And we might be seen before we get up onto the our quarry. So. So, should we split up? Is Did he appear to be traveling thing? alone? What's that? Did the target appear to be traveling alone? Yeah. I don't think being spotted is going to be too big of a deal. I mean, if, if he spots us and we're close enough that we can get to him on foot, then we'll just sure it's not an ambush, but we'll just run up on him. I'm sure he's not going somewhere by, I mean, to be alone, though. If he's going True. to the ground, he might be going somewhere where there's others. Do you think that, are you suggesting that we split up then? Nah, it's, I'm not saying that at all. Uh, I'm just saying that if we're going to move out in the open like this, you got to be aware that we're not going to be very easily to kept to stealth. Oh, it's never been case, our. We should just go for speed. Sorry, go ahead, Steve. Okay, stealth's never been our strong suit, so I think speed is fine. Or the the pack can travel behind you, Morris, as you scout ahead and leave your marks. We'll follow your path until you get to a point where you don't feel comfortable anymore. We can regroup. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Lance kind of chimes in and he says, Well, I tell you, um, it is our goal to seek out the assassin. Um, but uh, if you wish to kind of minimize the number here, I and the wounded dwarf here can make our way um, safely back to Squalo. If you want us to stay with you for numbers and for, for strength, we can. But I don't think... I, I think us heading back would not only help 
your cause and staying smaller a group, but it would also assist in um, helping this dwarf and possibly maybe even being able to recover his eye. Are we sure the displacer beasts have left the area? Morris looks at you and goes, I doubt they have. I don't think it'd be wise for the two of you to travel by yourselves then, especially with him, you know, only be able to see half of what he normally would. Lance says, well, we made it We made it the first time, and Morris says, you won't have me around this time. And they may have let you make it this far. You also won't have Lady Ithel with you to heal your wounds if you do run into problems. Fair enough. You could have just said that you want me to accompany you. And he smiles. Uh, Morin kind of looks at you and says, is it really possible for me to get my eye back? Ah. Nope. <laughs> Not anymore. Uh... <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Uh, Morris kind of like heads off into uh, down the path a bit, um, up over the ridge, and kind of makes his way that way. Um, he looks down at you guys, and uh, as he stands at the top, you see him take a single bolt that has a small white tassel, like kind of hanging from the back end of it, that he seems to have put on there, and he stabs it into the earth, and then kind of nods his head and walks off. So basically, markers to follow him. Hey, Ethel, you got any of those heals to hand out? Uh, I have two second level, two first level spells left. Other than that, I'm, I'm dry. But So, yeah, I can do a little. Do you want to use it on NPC? Uh, no, on me. On, yeah. I'm hurting my gal, so. Yeah, so I could do uh, uh, a healing word is the, the best one. Let's... Cure wounds. Cure, yeah, thanks. I need to be a better cleric, but yeah, I could do cure wounds. Well, it would be appreciated. Where'd it go? I don't see anything. Yeah, you just put your name in the text box. I don't know how you did that. I clicked Cure Wounds. Are we already having issues with Roll20? So when you click the spell in the spell's area, it should automatically roll, no? Yeah, usually. Um, hey, John, John, John you're also producing nothing. What's that? You're also producing nothing in the text log, just your name. Hmm. Well, you got something. Okay. Yeah, so for spells, apparently, it seems to be messed up, but hold on. No, mine works. Yeah, no, you didn't roll anything. You just posted the what oh. it is. Hmm. Sorry. Uh... Just Andy, roll it. Roll a d8 if you're casting it at first level, um, and then add. Uh, yeah, weapons appear to be working. Add your um, wisdom modifier plus two because you're a life cleric. So you'd be adding six to whatever you roll. Just roll a d8 and add six. Okay, so. Um, how much did you get? Ten. That's how much you get back. I am much more comfortable traveling with that. No worries, I have one spell left. Other than cantrips. I got some more lay on hands from leveling, so... Let's see. Alright, Morris. Take off, we'll be behind you. Yep, he's up the hill already and he's already left one of the bolts. When you go over to the bolt, do you pick it up or you just pass it by? I'll take it with me. Okay, good, good. You guys travel for a good hour or so, and towards the end of the hour, uh, Morris kind of stops, um, and uh, before planting another uh, bolt, he kind of just stops and waits. Um, what do you do in response? He, basically, you're out in the open fields. He just kind of stops, though. It looks like he's not... It doesn't look like he's stealthing or anything. It just looks like he's standing there waiting for you guys to catch up to him, really. Catch up to him. And uh, he's put down a number of bolts, kind of keeping you uh, tied to, you know, to where he's located. And he kind of walks over to you and offers to take them back. Yeah. And heads off about 60 feet out into the high grass. He kind of sets one down um, and continues on his way. Uh, it gets to a point where you cross over a, um, a, a game trail, more of an actual pass, um, really. And uh, you see Morris kind of stop at the pass, kind of from a... You guys are moving 
from a southward trajectory up north and you're going to cross over it and the grass is kind of um, there's kind of a hill that descends down to it and a hill that descends up from it you guys are coming down the hill and uh, Austinos kind of looks at you guys and sees Morris kind of stop and drop down and kind of raise his hand in a fist and he goes we gotta stop and we all drop down Cypress drops down yeah yeah absolutely okay. everybody can make um, a perception check um, if you'd like, and um, stealth check um, is not required. 22. Okay. 22. The two of 18. you, the two of you see that up ahead, um, in front of Morris, like where he's kind of stopped and looking across the uh, game pass, there appears to be a large cat, possibly two of them, and these small tendrils on its back are kind of fluttering about. It looks like it's kind of in a lower position as well, and you can see that its back hind legs are kind of doing one of these. Calibrating. How far away is the cat? Hold on a second. So you should be able to see it now, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Now, everybody rolled high enough to see that one. Ithel and uh, Cypress, you rolled high enough to see this one. Oh, crap. And it looks like it's actually stalking you guys. Um, at this point, I need you to, or I need everyone to roll initiative, but I will only be talking to the people who aren't going to be surprised for this round. Got it. Can you put a tracker up? Sorry. Yep. Mine's a 10. Uh, okay, hold on. I can't edit it myself. Oh, wait, yeah, I can. I got a 24, but it didn't throw me on the board. Yeah, gotta select your token first. I, I did. I think I know the issue, but... All right. So I'm, trying to, I'm trying to play from two screens at a time, and I think they're not communicating. Okay, so Jun, the uh, Displacer Beasts, Steve, uh, Ithel, Morris, uh, I don't know why it says Little Wilbur, but I'll fix that later. Uh, Austinos, no, no. just leave it. Uh, Boren, and oh, let's sit and get on. Okay. All right, uh, Jun, um, you didn't roll high enough to see them so you are currently surprised um, but you see the creature up ahead and you can kind of like see that Ithel and um, uh, Cypress are kind of reacting but you're not sure to what um, so you will not be able to act during this turn during this rise round it'll go to it it pounces the closest available target one second here All right, so it will be attacking um, the closest available target. All right, it hits. And it deals that much damage. OK, cool. You see Austin has kind of turned, and now there's a large looming creature over top of it, striking into it with its tentacles uh, and kind of raking at him. Um, he becomes bloodied very quickly, having not 
had too many wound or too many hit points remaining. Um, he was more health than most of you guys because of barbarian, but uh, he kind of uh, reflectively darks, uh, ducks and kind of pulls away, trying to defend himself. All right, um, Isaac, you did not roll high enough either on the um, perception, so you're just now realizing that the fight's happening and you're kind of stunned and getting yourself ready for the next round. Ithil, you on the other hand did see it coming and already. Yeah, uh, Ithil is going to I get oh. step right there and attack. Okay. That's one ballsy elf. She is ballsy. How'd you do on the attack? Seventeen. Um no, that's, that's, that's wrong. I'm sorry, I got a 9. Okay. Swing and a miss. It kind of, like, ducks to the side. Uh, something else you note, too, is that as you're attacking it, you see two of them. There's two of them. Pretty close to each other, relatively close. And you swing at one and kind of miss it um, entirely. Oh, I see. Okay. All right, um, Pert, we did not roll high enough, and Morris did roll high enough for the other one, but not this one. He sees the fight going on. He will be surprised, though. He wasn't expecting this. Cyprus. <coughs> uh, Cyprus will step up and around on this side of Astinos, and I'm going to bite at the Displacer Beast. Okay. 21 to hit. Yeah, that will actually miss. Uh, you swing at it with your teeth and you kind of bite into one, um, but you are biting into the wrong one. So you have disadvantage in all attacks against it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh, and bonus action, I'm going to. Uh... Oh, shoot, where'd it go? Hungry Jaws. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to roll bite again since it's the same roll. Mm hmm. 18, 16 disadvantage. So that'll hit. Five points, and I'll take a... All right. Two temporary. Ithel, you notice that the second that it gets bit by him, it, he bites the right one, both of them kind of become one again. Like, there's still now just one cat instead of this weird displacement of two. Um, all right. And then Austinos was surprised, and so was Boren. Uh, Jun, you were not surprised during this round. I, I will be using a bonus action to dash to get behind this. Okay. Um, and then trying to stab it with my rapier. Uh, 12 on disadvantage. That yeah, will... No, it's not disadvantage. You have, it, you have normal attack. Oh, it's... Okay, 15 to hit then. That'll hit. Take 7. All right. 7. Okay. Yeah, I screwed it up, but it's fine. It'll go to it. Uh, it's going to continue to lash out at um, Asinos. Um this time. How big are these? Large. Yeah, they're probably the size of um, a really big like lion or liker, um, but with the tentacles, they kind of and shoulders, they kind of have a bit more height, and they have a bunch of feet too. They don't have just four feet like a normal cat. They have okay. like, yeah, a bunch. Um, it's going to go ham on him. Okay. So with its two attacks, actually with its first attack, it knocks him down. With its second attack, it's going to force him to fail a death saving throw. All right. Uh, Steve, you see Ostinos gets slammed down and with these tentacles and the uh, displacer beast kind of smashing at him. As it does so, you see it start to split again um, and become like two cats in one. Then you also see bounding down the hill the other cat um, and it jumps onto Morris. Oh shit. Um, he takes one of the two attacks. He can get hit. 
Um, and uh, looks like he was writing an action and fires a bolt, but it seems to go into one, but it's not the real one. All right. Uh, so it's your up. As soon as he fires, I'm going to tell Morris to disengage and get over here with us. He looks back at you and kind of gives you like a, you know, for sure. Focus on one. Isaac. Two. What you doing, hey, Steve? Um, you said the one is over here. He's back to all, all freaky deaky. Yeah, they're both uh, currently in displacement. All right. Oh, I'll listen to Jun's tactics. And yeah, I'll move up here and I'll give it a swing. Okay. It's 20 to hit if it's disadvantage. Yeah, it hits. So nine. It snaps back into one again. And I'll smite because. Yeah. yeah. That's what paladins do. Uh, smite, yeah, 2d8. So another, so 19 total. Okay. Yeah, it looks pretty wounded. Uh, not bloodied quite, but wounded. Uh, Ithel? So is it back to its normal shape? It's not displaced? It's not displaced. Whenever it gets hit, it loses displacement. Then when it starts its turn, it regains it. Yes. Okay. So, 12? Yep, 12. All right. Uh, you cut into its, um, like, its shoulder and kind of cut into uh, a bit and blood starts to kind of flow from it. It kind of looks at you and growls uh, as it's kind of leaning over um, Asinos. All right. Anything else? Uh, no, I'm just going to growl back. All right. Uh, Lance will step in uh, as well um, and kind of like swing in. Um, he whiffs. Um, can't hit that AC because he's a lame-o. And he kind of reaches down and kind of tries to shield uh, Asinos from the creature. Uh, Morris kind of uh, uses his um, bonus action to disengage. Gets up higher on the hill and takes a shot at the uh, one that's not displaced. And hits for 12 points. Pretty solid. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks like he's ready for more. Uh, Cyprus. I'm going to go ahead and cast Entangle okay. at the northern one. Oh, the northern to one? To try to keep it, try to keep it where it is. Smart. What's the range? 20 foot, okay, cool. It's a 20 range foot square, feet. range is 90 feet. No, I'm saying is that you could like put it in a general area and hope to catch the one that's, if it's displaced. Right, right. Yeah, cool. Okay. <clears throat> Strength saving throw, DC... Against 13. Okay. And it, when it casts spells. Okay. So it doesn't appear to be caught in it. Um, it looks like a lot of the roots kind of go through one of them. and looks like they're entangling on it. While the, the main one appears to not have roots kind of growing through it. It's a very strange um, appearance. But it appears to be kind of pulling itself free of the roots, no problem. Um, Austinos death saving throw failure so he has one remaining and then the uh, Boren will uh, rush in kind of standing over top um, Asinos and uh, he swings in with his pick like screaming out ah trying to save his friend he misses against that AC uh, John, it's still uh, not displaced. It's still in uh, non-shimmer mode, so you can go ahead and attack it normal. Okay, uh, one second. Okay. Okay, so on my turn, I'm going to tell Isaac Morris and Cypress on your next action, immediately go engage the other one. Since the roots, we can see it going through the wrong one. We know which is which now. Okay. The disadvantage thing should be gone. Well, if you are using the bonus action to help them and point that out, yeah, I'll allow that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and then I'll be using my action to stab this one. Okay. Uh, stab it in the face. 
snapping my rapier to my offhand and pulling the diggler in one action. Okay. So you... 18 to hit. Yeah, the diggler will hit. You're not thinking... Plus... Yeah, you don't, hmm. you, don't, you don't have a second attack or anything, by the way. Just the one. No, no, no. I'm just, just for full. Throwing one in the air, catching with the offhand, snapping with the diggler. Okay. That does seven piercing. Sneak attack isn't rolling. It's 2d6 now, right? Yeah. Uh, plus six. Yep. Okay. Um, it will use its um, action to take the disengage action. Uh, but as a part of its, uh, as its bonus action, it's going to snap onto Asinos' body with its tentacles. And just start bounding off over to here. It's dragging Asinos, um away. I forgot the Vicious Mockery. That vicious, was the other thing I wanted Vicious to Mockery is a spell you can cast with it. It's not, you cast it when you attack or anything. It's either or. You can use the... Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was part of, like, after you hit, you... No. Alright. Basically, <laughs> it, it serves as a either, it's, it's a magical dagger, or you can cast gotcha. a spell with okay. it. Yeah. That's what that Displacer Beast does. This one moves out of the entangling area. Which still remains, right? Yeah. Okay. What's the uh, radius? 20 foot. Uh, yeah, 20. Okay. Hold on a second. Becomes difficult terrain. Yeah, 20 foot square. Oh, need, no, no, radi ra radius makes it a 40 foot square. That's a little large. Four, five, six, seven, one more. Really? Wow. Based on everyone's uh, positioning from before, I would have presumed you would have put it there. Is that accurate? Yeah, I was, I was going for avoiding ourselves, if I could. It says it's a 20 foot square starting from a point within range. Yeah, I, I, I know, but it I don't have a square specifically. I just have the circle, so just go with it being a square. Okay. And it's, it's 20, foot, 20 foot radius or 20 foot square? Square. Oh, okay. It says 20 foot square, so I'm guessing 20 it by would... 20. Then it would have been there. Yeah. That yeah. was a little large. <laughs> I was impressed with myself. Yeah. The other cat will move out of the entangling stuff to a position between you and the other one. Um, and it looks like it is readying an action. Okay. Its tentacles are kind of up high, and it's kind of got its feet back like it's ready to pounce up and start swinging. Alright. Uh, next up is... Uh, uh, Isaac. Isaac. Um, you can make a Dodge. perception check if you'd like um, to see what the state of Asinos is at this time. Oh no, my friend. Oh, he just picked him up and disengaged, right? Yeah, but he kind of snapped into him with the tentacles to start. Which have like, basically they look like uh, like flat pads at the tips, but the pads have spikes on the interior. Um, he did. Yeah. So when you look over at him, you notice that uh, based on the way that those things are kind of holding him and kind of caught onto him, you're pretty sure Asinos is dead, not currently breathing or alive or dying, oh, God. just outright dead. Um, but the one that's pulling away is pretty wounded, right? Um, the one that's pulling away with Asinos in its grasp is pretty wounded, yeah. But the one that jumped in between you and it, not so much. All right, you know, I know what I would do, but I know what Isaac would do, and he'd say, fuck this guy, I gotta save my friend, even though he's probably dead, he deserves a burial or some shit like focus, that. Yeah. Focus on the immediate threat, let Morris take the shot. You say Too that. Late. I'm blinded by <laughs> did you vengeance. Go, did you run past my cat? Oh, I ran past it. Oh, okay. So, what is my reaction to attack you? you do it. Do it, you bitch. <laughs> Your armor class is 18? It's 18. Okay. 
So first attack hits for 8 and 4 is 12. Second attack hits for uh, 14 total. So 14 plus uh, 12. So how much is that? Total of 26. 26. Oh god. 26 minus 6 because I'm a heavy armor master now, boy. Yeah, there would have been two attacks. That's it. Did it knock you down or are you still up? Oh, I'm up. All right. You rush over to the one that's got Atsunos. Um, and I'm gonna I'm, I'm attack him with my attack. Yep. <laughs> Actually, um, I better make this attack worth it. I'm gonna bonus action and I'm gonna use a spell. I'm gonna use uh, Divine Favor to charge up my blade. Put your whole ass into this. The whole ass. <laughs> oh, he's got an advantage on this too from the aid. He does have advantage. Uh, no, no, wrong target. Oh. Or does it you just put it on in general? I don't know. No, you, 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 hmm. yeah, you know what, the way you described it being the help, yeah, no, it's against the one that was in Brambles, but is no longer, but yeah. Damn uh, it. That will hit. Oh, shit, it does hit. Kill him. Probably 15. Fuck, what's my favor? D4, I think, of Radiant. Well, what did you cast with the bonus action? What was that again? Divine favor. Yeah, so one uh, extra d4. Yeah, roll it. So, 18. As you rush in and kind of like, ah, smack, smack, ah, hit the cat in like the chest, you see like the spark of radiant energy kind of burst through and its two forms kind of snap together, but as they do, they're kind of splitting apart because the chest has been cut open. The tentacles kind of fling wildly in Asinos' body, which is a good 300 or so pounds, is flung like a ragdoll uh, down into like the, the hill, like right about there-ish. And uh, it, the cat just kind of falls to the ground. Dead. Yeah, it was worth it. I don't even care. All right, uh, Ithel. Uh, yeah. It, is it displaced? Or yes. Do I, do I, yes, shit. Uh, yeah. Swinging at it? Swinging at it. Okay. You come in and swing, and what'd you get on your second, the lowest one? A nine. Okay, yeah, you swing, and it kind of hits near where the cat is but misses all right uh pertwee kind of looks at you guys as you guys are advancing and kind of lets out a ah and rushes in to fight as well uh he will once he gets to that position he's actually going to take the dodge action and kind of like smack his sword against his shield like looking at the cat yeah right here and it also looks like he's ready to snap his arm out to kind of catch any attacks that hit towards the elf like he has the protection fighting style. Ooh, nice. All right. Uh, Morris kind of gets low onto his knee, loads his heavy crossbow, looks at it for a second, and just kind of holds the line. It doesn't look like he's taking a shot this turn, though, but it does look like he's focusing in on it. He's ready to shoot it. All right. Uh, low Wilbur. A Cypress stew. Can I... Can I confirm whether or not Astinos is dead from looking at him from this distance? Um, now that the cat's in the way, um, uh -huh. I, would, I would say that you wouldn't get a free one like Isaac did, but if you want to use your action to kind of like check him, um, yeah, you can do that. No, I won't do that. Uh, I'm going to run up on the far side of the bramble. Okay. And cast Thorn Whip. Uh, 20... Yeah. Disadvantage. That hits. Um, 10 feet closer to you. Alright, so it's kind of stuck in the square. Um, when it re-enters, it, does it have to make a check, or is it just... Uh, no, it's just difficult to rain okay. for him. Gotcha. And uh, if... Sorry, if Astinos is in sight, I'd like to cast Healing Word as a bonus action. Um, hold on. He's outside of Wait, Healing Word. I okay. think it's 30 feet for Healing Word. It's 60. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. You, you cast it. It uh, doesn't seem to take effect. Okay. All right. 
Um, Boren will rush in. Ah! And he uh, doesn't have disadvantage at this point. He hits. Was Morris not up on his ready action yet? Yeah, he's taking it now. Oh, okay. And you see the large heavy crossbow fire in. Uh, hits. That shot, when it impales into it, it actually goes into the skin, but doesn't explode out the back. It seems to kind of like lodge in the cat, and it just starts freaking out. It's not bleeding, but it does seem that the heavy crossbow was precisely aimed with the skill of a sharpshooter, um, and uh, it hurts him a lot more than a normal bolt would. John? I move up behind the kitty cat. And I stab it. All right. Hit, sneak. Plus eight. Okay. On its turn, it'll take the disengage action. Moving to here. Oh, bonus action aid on uh, Isaac. And its movement is, is lessened from the being in the brambles? Hold on a second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That would be ten squares of movement, which would be fifty feet so far. Um, Does disengage free him from all attacks of opportunity? Correct. So I'm not going to move back into the brambles. I'm going to move away from them. So that would be. That would have been uh, 30, 35, and move to there. And it takes Astenos up as it does so. Likes to play with its food. No, it's so trying hungry. to have food. <laughs> no, that's my friend. I run out of. All right. Attack him with my sword. You have eight on this one. Yes. But you also have this oh. advantage, but it doesn't matter either I way. Nice. Alright, damage. Eight. Uh twelve. Okay, right. Do I have eight? Okay. Alright, it's uh bleeding uh quite a bit. It, it's definitely scared and it's kinda of holding on to uh Asinos, like desperately. With his tentacles, Ithel. Yep, beside Isaac. It's no longer displaced. That'll hit. Nice. And Lance will uh, rush in. Uh, seeing that we have him on the other foot, he's going to swing. He doesn't hit. Uh, Morris will take a shot. He's again going to attempt to sharpshoot it. Fuck, miss. And then, uh, Cypress. I'm going to, uh, decast the briar, the entanglement. Take it out. Stop concentrating, that's all you're doing. Or, yeah, whatever. You know, he, get, he got one of that. I'm going to run up 30 feet and cast another. Sort of Whip it. Okay. Whip it good. Hit. And Is he... because of his positioning with everyone in front of him, he cannot be pulled closer to you. Okay. Because he'd have to push everyone back. And sure. That's fine. Do it. I just wanted to hit him. For four damage. Alright. Uh, Boren has stubby feet. Or stubby legs, rather. He's going to take the dash action to try and get closer. He does. Chun. Stab. Okay. Miss. Action economy. All right. It'll go to it. Uh, bo go ahead. Bonus. Give the uh, aid back to Isaac again. Okay. All right. The second it kind of starts its turn and has him and it looks like terribly afraid, it's going to take the dash action. So it'll be moving 100 feet. Um, and that'll obviously take it off board and make it pretty hard to chase for you guys. Um, 
but every single one of you will get an opportunity attack. It's at disadvantage because it just regained its displacement. Oops. Ignore that. So everyone who's adjacent to it will take an opportunity attack. Do they all happen Miss. at the same time or not? What's that? Yeah, they all. Do all these? Yeah. They're all simultaneous. Pretty okay. much. So I'm the only one who gets it normal because advantage, of... right? Yeah. Hundred feet is still within range of a bolt. Oh, nice. Oh, well, after that, you can take a turn to try and shoot after it, but no one's going to chase it down. Eight damage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, nine damage. All right. And miss with Diggler. Miss with a short sword. Um, okay, now I guess it comes to my NPCs. Hold on a second here. Uh, Boren will miss. And Lance will miss. All right. Um, so it starts bounding off. Uh, it goes 100 feet off map in this direction. Uh, Steve, you could move 60 feet closer to it if you want, but it looks like it's probably going to lose you over time. I think we can agree on that. Um... My light crossbow, I think, has a decent it's enough range. Eighty-three twenty. Okay, so you have to drop your sword and then pull out your crossbow. Yeah, I would okay. have to pull it off my back or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and then you could go but, ahead and I mean, if you're not sheathing your sword, you're just dropping it. Yeah, I'm I guess just, that's fine. In desperation, I'm want to get Asmund's body back, so I'll just take my shot. Okay, still at disadvantage. Hits. Why? Why is it at disadvantage? It was just hit. Uh, no, for range, for range. It's 100 oh, feet away. Range. It's 100 feet. Um, damage. All right. As and it's as it's starting away, you kind of line up the shot, fire it, and it just falls to the ground. Nice. And Asinos's body gets thrown in the air again and it's bashed on the floor. Oh. <laughs> Cheap ragdoll physics. All right. What do you guys do immediately after the combat? No, I drop my Rushed crossbow. His body, yeah. Yeah, just with the adrenaline, just run, try to scoop up his body. All right. Uh, when you get to him, it looks like a lot of him is kind of broken and twisted, like he's been thrown 10, 15 feet up in the air to fall on his head. Um, and it twice. Looks, twice even. And it looks like there's like a lot of his chest that's been kind of like ripped and pierced with those pads, as it's been using that main portion of meat to be the section point for its. Um, it's uh, tentacles. Ithel knows it's, does, it won't work, but she casts Spare the Dying anyway. You, 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 spare the, you can't spare the dead. I know, but yeah. she does it anyway. Fair enough. All right. And then you guys kind of all come over to where he's at, right? I shoot my weapons. Morris, can you still hit that trail? Uh, Morris kind of looks to you guys and uh, says, it, it goes cold right at that path. So, um, the path is decently traveled. Oh, I'm sorry, let me get my gruff voice. The path is decently traveled enough. I don't know which way he went. Either east, into, back into the swamp, or west, back towards the town of Squallow. I don't know which way for sure. But it's your choice. Which way do you want to? Which way do you want to go? How far out from Squall are we? Uh, about a day. Ithel turns to Jun, uh, thief. Which way would an assassin take if he were running away? A swamp or a town? Depends on the assassin and what he, how he likes to hide. Personally, I'd head back into town. That's where the drinks are. To be fair, he was already heading towards the swamp when we first started tailing him. Well, when you first started tailing him. So it could be that's the way he was going to go. Or it was always a ploy to double back back into town and head deeper into civilization. I don't know for sure. But I do know this. That man's dead. What, what kind of travel is there on the path? Uh, is it between foot traffic or carts? Foot traffic, primarily. It doesn't look like it's been traveled much like morris could probably track you know a bit to it but there's probably been a couple of people through here in the last like maybe one or two people through here in the last day or so okay um let's do morris 
Cypress, and Ithel, and myself, we will head to the trail, no farther than that, and let him study it to see if he can decide which way it went. Okay. We'll leave the paladin here. He can prep the body and decide if he's going to bury it here or if we're going to travel the day back to town. You guys should be fairly safe standing next to two displacer beasts that no more are going to attack. I think they're smarter than that. Uh, Asnos is a man of the road. We'll build him a small cairn here. Old soldier can finally rest. You can have a headstone of displaced bones. Yes, they'll, uh, their skulls will make fine trophies for this uh, fine warrior. Morris kind of uh, gauges um, the uh, trail and goes over it a bit more finely and kind of looks over to you, John, and says, It's really tough. Uh, two people traveled um, west towards Squallow earlier this morning, about when we were probably exploding, I think, around about then. But one individual not too long ago, maybe an hour or two, was heading east into the swamps, heading towards the um, Parnax area border. Yeah, let's hold up here for the rest of the party. Let them finish their grave digging. Okay. As you guys start to do so, kind of start to dig up, um, everybody can make a perception check. Twenty-two. Nineteen. Twenty-three. Okay. Oh, sorry. You guys um, are... Twenty-four. Kind of, yeah, you guys are all kind of paying attention to, you know, the site at hand and also checking, you know, where you're at and what's around. To the north, you can see the barrier peaks, um, you know, off on the uh, northern horizon, um, cold as they may be. Um, and to uh, the east, you can see, like, you know, the, the portions of the swamp that um, your friend Cypress comes from. Um, but what you also see coming, like, moving around the swamp and its higher trees, like its higher old growth trees, uh, is something kind of flying in a circular pattern over about where uh, you think the cave might have been at the entrance. And the creature that you see flying appears to be green in color and appears to have kind of a reptile-like... Um, uh, look to it um cypress make a uh just an intelligence check four so you would know that it's actually 21 because it's giving advantage but uh, oh, cool, cool. you would know that there is a green dragon that lairs in that swamp um the green dragon's name is chalk rescafar and um it's very territorial, um, and you don't know why it's circling and specifically in that area, but it appears to have been brought out of its reverie. It typically hunts in the denser portions of the swamp and the forest, um, where you, you know that fake creatures like dryads and such are present, um, but it appears to be out and about closer to the outskirts of the swamp. Is that the same dragon that Ethel came across in the very beginning of the adventure? The beginning of the adventure, you were dealing with a dragon called Freemoss. Oh, okay. It was a white dragon that you guys eventually killed. It's a swamp, eh? Maybe the black dragon's trying to mooch. Yeah, black dragons are typically swamp dwellers uh, primarily. Uh, green dragons are normally forest dwellers, so it's weird. It's not terribly weird to see one in a swamp, but... Um, so it's got a lot of growth, so it's pretty foresty. Yeah. But two dragons in one area, this place sucks. Well, you, again, you guys are about a day or so away from where you dealt with it's the last. my hope. Property values are shit up here. Oh, for sure. Not many people are migrating. Um, Cypress... Did Cypress um, communicate that it was weird that he'd be like out and about? Or is he just kind of pondering it to himself? It does seem, yeah. I, w I would point out, I'd, I'd say the name of it if anyone else were able to see it, or I'd point it out. Uh, that's Chalk Rescafar. Uh, it's very strange to see him out of his lair, out of the out of the forest, the deeper area. I wonder what's gotten into him. Why would a dragon be circling? 
perhaps. As you kind of ask yourself that question, you see it descend out of sight into the tree line. Oh, that's why. There you go. Oh, if with any luck, he's dive bombing on our assassin, saving us some trouble. Well, at this point, we're a day away from town. We're not too far from the swamp, but it's full of dragon. And I don't know about the rest of you, but I don't think I'm quite at dragon fighting level. Nope. Again. Like, I'll fight a dragon, I just don't... It probably isn't going to go so hot. I'd like, right now. I'd like a nap first. Yeah, I think I'm out of juice. Even Morris, after leveling up. Morris kind of looks to you guys and says, uh, It's up to you. Whichever way you want to go. I'm ready. If something's in that swamp, I think the dragon's got it. Yeah, we should go back and ask around town. It'll give us a chance to rest and regroup. We can maybe ask, see if anyone saw. Do we? Do, only Jun knows that Ian is the assassin, right? Or does that, is that general knowledge? You would know that's. Um, you would know what the it assassin looked like, based it on the. Be assumed the guards that went ahead of us before we went to meet the assassin. The assassin before this assassin said that Ian Sweets had gone in ahead of us, but Ian had already left town. Right. So it should be assumed that the town is looking for Ian Sweets as an assassin. But, right, you would know, based on what you saw, uh, Isaac, when you came out of the, um, the, the dungeons of the castle, out onto the shoreline of the river, you saw the thing that was dressed as Ian Sweet change into that weird, strange figure, the doppelganger. Oh, okay, so I know it's a doppelganger. Only I've seen that. I was. The oh, one you one. were the only one that saw it. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Myself, and then later myself and Morris. Morris. Morris shot it in the chest. So he and I are the only two that have seen it. Flip. Yeah, but he's a probably he's probably a bit more open uh, with the knowledge. So it might have been spilled out by him at some point. So. He, oh, that's fine. I would. I could have said it at any point too. Yeah, Morris probably mentioned that it's a doppelganger. Well, if it's a doppelganger, he's more than likely taken on a new form and. I would assume he would go back into town. It's much easier for him to blend in with humans. Than well, as, Morris, as Morris said, we have two sets of footprints going east of town, and, or whichever direction. The other one set going back into the forest. The newer one's going into the swamp. So odds are it went into the swamp and either became something else or became dinner. Right. So at this point, we need to decide if we want to go to town and rest or set up a camp. The road we're on, is it kind of like a king's road? Like, is it pretty well-traveled? This road that you're looking at is basically just a game trail. It's not much of anything. Uh, okay. it, it looks like it might lead a ways to connect to the main road that kind of connects the two border places, but those roads are typically not traveled officially, so there aren't wagons that are traveling officially. Um, because there isn't supposed to be trade between those two kingdoms, or those two countries. Yeah, I'm just trying to judge how good of a place this trail would be for camping. Like, if we are going to rest here. Right. We already right. know there's oh. displacer beasts. Uh, a note, too. It's uh, it's only about noon, like, day-wise. That, that you were attacked so openly, it, it, it's a testament to the cats being wild beasts. Hungry. Starved. And starved. Because uh, a dragon's eating all their food. Could Cyprus uh, sort of investigate the one of the dead uh, displacer beasts, see if there's anything to them? Yeah, um, go ahead and make a nature check or a medicine check, your choice. Uh, I'll do medicine. 16. Okay, um, so they are definitely gaunt and uh, a bit... Um, uh, you know, emaciated. Emaciated. It does look like they've recently. <laughs> yeah, that... it, do, it does look like they have recently eaten, though, based on like the, um, you know, just it, it, they seem to be a bit more lively than like completely starving. But it looks like the food that they're getting is scarce. It's not. It looks like this one might have eaten like last, like a week ago, or this one might have eaten like a day ago, um, depending. It does it have a tummy full of purple robes. Um, do you start cutting it up to find that out? Oh, I'm not going to, but this guy might. Those are oh, I, I would imagine that it's starving because of the, the plant life 
the actual forest itself is dying from the mushrooms would be a conclusion Cypress would draw. Right. Well, so you, I, I would I would be interested in with that dissecting it, see what kind of diet it's had. With that medicine check and a little bit of uh, persuasion via dagger, um, you actually find out that it does look like they are contaminated. They do have some sort of disease kind of running through them. Um, and uh, uh, oh, with a 16, I'm not going to give it to you, but I will allow you to make a history check if you want to try and figure out what this um, disease might okay. be. 11? You're not sure. Um, okay. It, it, it's basically from what you can tell, though, it seems that there are parasites inside of the creature that seem to be kind of eating away the food before the food is actually used as nourishment for the animal. It makes the Cypress, creature hungrier. Cypress would want to burn the bodies. Smart. Okay. If no one objects to that. We're going to be burning the bodies and burying Austinos. I guess we should just make a short rest. We don't have to take a long rest. We can have a short rest, have some lunch, take care of a little bit of business, and then go into a swamp. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and, and, and make sure that we have an understanding of what's happening. Cause I we surely don't. <laughs> I, I need you guys to decide. I can't tell you where you're going. That'd just be railroading. But yeah, you could follow a possible lead into the swamp, which appears dangerous, or you could head back to the town of Squall. Uh, Ithil says, it seems like there's a 50-50 chance of him going either way. Uh, going back to the town at least gives us a possibility of rest and healing. I vote for the town. The footprints Morris found heading back to town are older than the ones heading into the swamp. He wasn't far enough ahead of us to be morning traveling into town. We shouldn't be more than that hour behind him. I think it's safe to say that the footprints going into the swamp are him. Now, with all this information, when are uh, green dragons typically active? Uh, this one appears to be active now. Um, High but, noon. Uh, typically dragons are... Uh, uh, green dragons will be active more during like the day. Uh, green dragons aren't as nocturnal as, say, their... Uh, uh, black or white brethrens. Um, sometimes green dragons are, you know, seen pretty active during the day, um, based on what you can see. But what I need is an arcana or a nature check to be a hundred percent certain, because I already. Right. So why I'm asking the group and people that have these abilities. Uh, I could try. Because if we feel safe enough and you know, sure enough, and Morris can lead us. We could take, we could force ourselves into a long rest now and then go nocturnal on it. Does the 13 nature? You know about Chuck Rescafar specifically. He's more active during the day, not so much during the day. Uh, Ithil, you're not sure. Um, you think you remember something from when you were in Varhwin that green dragons were known as fey dragons or were sometimes referred to as like um, fey, the, the, the children or the dragons of the fey? But uh, you're not sure what it meant or what it how it relates. But yeah, based on what you are um, sensing here, Chalk Rescafar is active during the day. Uh, Chalk Rescafar's primary prey, what it prefers to eat, if it has its choice, are dryads. And uh, members of your circle, the circle of the One Wood, have had encounters in the past with Chalk Rescafar, and it has eaten a number of the oak trees that uh, contain some of the dryads of the circle. So again, uh, Ithel wants to go back to town. She says, I'm not much used to you uh, with only one, one available spell. That's what I was saying. We could, if we set up a camp here, we could force ourselves into a long rest and then travel more at dusk into night and try to sneak into the swamp and get a head start on the dragon before it finds us in the morning. Oh, that's smart. Going in at night when it's probably asleep and it lets us long rest. Uh, John, do, do you allow long rest in this campaign in the wild? Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I'm just, um, the situation that you're currently in is kind of a precarious one. So I would need you guys to kind of find somewhere safe to camp. Like when you were in the cave, it was pretty safe the way you had made it. Out here on the road, especially with a dragon in flight, not so safe. Can our dru your druid help with that? 
I I know the swamp reasonably well. Maybe I would be able to find what an area on the it? outskirts. Do we own your house? Do we only like, have high grass right here? Yeah, hut or something. Yeah, I, I have much. a house. Sure. There's like a little hut or a tree house. It's pretty much high grass out here. Uh, like a lean to, I would imagine. You don't actually have a residence. Um, I figured. Circle druids don't really reside anywhere. Typically, if you're going to stay somewhere and you have your preference of staying somewhere, it's in the circle of trees, the circle of oaks in the center of the swamp. Is there a grouping of trees or anything near us, like within walking distance, where we could get some kind of canopy coverage? Uh, barely any, no. Uh, like, there's a tree or two there, but you are out in the fields. That feels that you'd... Okay. What about well, the, the fringe we're... of the swamp or the fringe of the forest? We're not, that, we're not that far from the cave we left, right? A uh, couple hours. Yeah, because you guys traveled for a while, at least two hours before you met that point. Because we know where we are, and the swamp could be... Is it a shorter distance from the cave to the swamp from where we are to the swamp? It, the cave and the swamp are basically equidistant. Remember that the cave was on the edge of the swamp? Remember where the lizard folk came out of? It was right near where that's at. Okay, then let's head back to the cave finish off that cave in and actually seal the back door, take the waterway back to the front, re-secure that door, make our camp for a long rest, wake up, and then head into the swamp from the front. So that sounds like at least six hours worth of work dropping in caves and stuff and moving throughout the cave, and the two hours getting there, so that's eight hours worth of work you're going to be putting in. Is that is that right? Is it six hours to move through the cave? No, no, to cave stuff in. Like, you don't have explosives or anything, right? You're going to be heading oh, into no, the Oh, no, but I mean, it was mostly done already. Sure, but like you're still going to be doing most of that movement of stone with a pick, right? That's not going to be like done relatively quickly, like or just jam something in the hole to make it a little harder. No, nothing like serious. Okay, so then I'd say probably about four hours for you to kind of get everything back to a point where you are safe and back in that cave. Sound about right? And we were burning the. Were you really going to be safe in that cave with uh, Astinus. the homicidal monk in there as well? What if he just decides to? What if he can't find a sword and comes out and punches us in our head in our sleep? So it is also him. Just to be sure, that's where you guys are. Your, your plan is to go towards the broken hey, door. Hey, hey, could you let the party talk? We're I'm having just, a discussion. I know. Okay, sorry. I Stop railroading. <laughs> Why were you saying Isaac? Uh, homicidal monk. Yeah. Um, if you can't, if you can't find his sword, he might get pissed and punch us in the head. In our sleep. How far travel wise are we from like getting deeper into the swamp? Where there is a tree canopy, anything like that? So you are about two hours away from the cave. The cave is basically the border of the swamp. So you're about two okay. hours to get to the swamp's edge. To get into the deep portions of the swamp, another two hours. And okay, then... so we walked away from the swamp to get to where we are. Correct. Okay, my mistake. Bit. So we have cave, we can attempt to hide in with homo homicidal monk. We have edge of swamp, we can attempt to hide in with potential green dragon, or we can go to town and lose two days getting back into the swamp. Let me tell you, that is a oh, is green dragon. <laughs> town. Gotta vote for town. Well, if that's the case, do you want to bury Astodos here or try to bring him back to oh, he's on the ground. He's, 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 done? In okay. a, he's in a stone cairn. Some fine work. He was a man of the road. I don't think he would much care for a formal grave. At least that's what I got from him for the couple days I knew him. Did I get... what's, your, what's your vote there, uh, Cyprus? I I guess the city makes more sense. Uh, I'm feeling a little worse for wear after this first 24 hours of meeting you people. So, a little R&R &R would probably be in my benefit. Morris and Lance, what page are they on? Uh, Morris is, doesn't care. Doesn't have an opinion. Lance does not want to go into the swamp, period. Um, and then Boren, Boren, yeah, yeah, Boren wants to go to town. Blah blah blah. My eye, I don't care. Well, Boren's been crying over the uh, grave of Asinos the the whole time you guys have been talking. Only out of one eye, though. 
Yeah, no, sure. Yeah, blood's gonna right. be the other one. Tear duct works. <laughs> All right, I guess we're, guess we're going to town. The vote appears that way. All right, let's go to town, heal up, and come back out in a couple of days. Okay. If you guys hard march it, you can get there just into nightfall. If, like, if you go straight on and try your hardest, you'd make it there like 10 ish, 11 ish. Um, if you want to stop and not take a hard march, then you'd be getting there the next morning. No, just push for it. Okay. All right, is a hard march going to cost us exhaustion or anything? Could potentially. Here's how we do that Constitution saving throws. Get rid of exhaustion. We just have to take like long rest of our. Nineteen. <laughs> yeah. Three. All right. So. Uh, Three. Uh, the, druid, <laughs> the druid and the cleric <laughs> are basically dragging at the end of it. Uh, by the time you finally made it, you guys have two levels of exhaustion from the hard march. Just those that failed it. Yeah, and just the ones who failed it, and then those who didn't fail it, you have one level of exhaustion. Yeah. Oh wow, we're not very. Sh Me and Lancer kind of failed his knights here. If the lady was like aching her feet, we probably should have carried her on our backs or something. That's probably why you had the level of exhaustion. Um, <laughs> Boren um, is super exhausted by the time you make it back to the city, and uh, so is um, Morris. Actually, I'm really tired as well. Um, all right, let me go ahead and pull up the uh, town map. I don't think um, the lizard's been here yet. Nope. Welcome to Squallow. Uh, it is a small town on a river, uh, the River Swallow, and um, you guys would be entering into it uh, from the uh, east bank, um, so you would be entering on that main bridge, the main thoroughfare. Tell me what's happening. Just for the sake of history, and I like to do it, I'll be entering through a side door, and I tell you guys I'll meet you in the tavern, and I disappear. Okay. What's a tavern? <laughs> yeah, I want to get to the town for R and R. What's a town? What's a? <laughs> you think I live this close? I'd have seen this place before. You would note that as you're kind of approaching um, everyone, except for John, who kind of darts off to the side, that the main gates um, are actually closed, and you do see that there's torchlight in the gatehouses off to the side. I'll approach the gatehouse and... Halt! You hear from up above. Who goes there? Tis I, Sir Isaac of the Comus Pelotinus, in my retinue. We seek entry to the town for rest and food. You hear some talking. Oh, I recognize you. Yeah, you were given the uh, magistrate rights by the Lord uh, Vastal. Uh, enter through the side door. And then you hear a creak as a door off to the side of the main gates is opened up. Basically, that open space in between is sealed off with two large uh, uh, wooden uh, doors. And then there's a small little door into the side house there. Uh, John, um, the red one. make a stealth check for me. Oh, Sean. As you're kind of moving through your normal passageway... <laughs> You notice that there's a torch light up ahead. Like, this place seems to be manned. Like, there's people here. And then you feel a hand just grab onto your shoulder and says, Hey, what are you doing here? And he kind of spins you around to face him. And it's a town guardsman with a uh, staff in one hand um, and a, a lantern in the other. I go full four and face and just give him a big smile and a wave. Oh, okay. so I, was, I was just taking a walk around the town and I show him my magistrate's uh, dagger. Oh, he kind of looks you up and down and he says, Oh. Well, you have to enter through the main entrance, but I suppose since you're already here, just head on this way. And he kind of leads you along. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, based on the magistrate's dagger, he kind of just leads you to where he goes and believes the story. Um, and lets you in through the normal means that you uh, go through. But strangely, you would know that this is probably not the safest passageway moving forward. All right. Um, you head into um, the town to the tavern. You guys are heading to the tavern as well, or... If I would head to the temple, Stasia. Okay. Well, there's no Stasia temple yet. There's one that's being kind of... There's a place that's being given to you. It hasn't been f finished yet. Remember, there's two temples in town. There's the Avarian temple... Or, I'm sorry, yeah, the Avarian temple and the uh, dwarf temple. Uh, Dwarson. Okay. In that case, I would follow Isaac. Okay. Isaac is going. Um... Well, I'll look to, if I'll say, my lady, 
We can, uh, the tavern is humble and will fit our needs, but if, uh, prefer, I'm sure our positions will allow us, the Lord would allow us quarters in his, uh, in the necropolis? What is it? The ziggurat? The ziggurat. The ziggurat. Yeah. They may be more comfortable. If all nods and, and say, yes, yes, let's do that. All right, so we'll, we'll try to get quarters at the, at the ziggurat. Okay. Um, you head on that way. The uh, doors are also barricaded in the north gate, and you also see that the doors are also barricaded at the, um, the castle keep. There doesn't appear to be anyone manning the doors at the keep's doors. There's no one present. No one to request access. Oh, there's no one, like, on the wall or anything? No. Uh, anything strange? Do we sense that there's something off here? Like, should there be some people here? Um, you can see that there are guards present on the ziggurat proper, but that's hundreds of feet away. You can see their torchlights moving. It looks like that the guard around the ziggurat, it doesn't pay attention to the interior door when it's sealed, because there's no need. It pays attention to the exterior uh, towers. And there's no, like, side doors or anything, just this big gate? There, I mean, if you want to slip into the dungeon, you can go outside, drop through a hole... No, 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 no. That's no, too no. much effort. We were just trying to look like get a, a bed of feathers instead of one of hay. Right? Exactly. Exactly. It, it looks like it's too late to call upon the Lord. All right. Okay, to the tavern it is then. All right. You go to the tavern and um, enter in. It's a pretty uh, decent um, amount of people here at this late hour. Um, you see Jun kind of um, making his way to, you know, uh, one of the table or bar. Where are you going? Uh, before I ever get there, I'll be looking heavily around the town at where guards are stationed, what's going on, what doors are sealed. I'm all assuming all of it's because of the assassinations and well, stuff, but just it, to get yeah. information for the future. To be fair, it doesn't look like guards are out and about and like you know in any more force than they normally would be, and the gates are typically sealed up um, at night. Anyways, this is the first time that you've really traveled around in the way that you have at night. Um, so it just looks like the guard is a bit more active at night um, than normal um, on the exterior of this town uh, specifically. But yeah, um, it, it looks like all of the buildings are locked up and shut up um, with the exception of the tavern. But it, it does appear to be normal for the town. Just, it's just, this maybe, is how it goes. maybe slightly heightened due to the you know deaths that have happened present, but uh, nothing like... You know, they haven't bring, brought in the National Guard or anything. It's not like... They don't, they don't appear to be on, like, a full or anything. Yeah, it's nothing like hunt. that. Right. Okay, then, yeah, I'll just head into the tavern. Okay. Uh, so, like, when you enter in, just after you enters in, uh, so do the other three. Um, you would see that it's a lively bunch of people, um, you know, um, quite a few folk. Um, but you do see that sitting at a table, kind of in the shadows off on her own, is the fortune teller that you saw on the roads um, back when you were traveling before. Do you recall the fortune teller? Yeah, I remember. I, just, I still don't care. Yeah. Who else is in here? Um, quite a lot of um, fishermen uh, being very rowdy. In fact, uh, shortly after you guys finally like, kind of get in uh, as such, it looks like two of them are having a, 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 a spat of blows. doesn't look like they're being terribly violent to each other. It's like one person's punching the person's arm and then offering his arm up for the other person to punch until like a winner is determined. Um, the uh, barkeep is, you know, typical, just uh, as is. Um, and uh, make a perception check, John. Just John. 19. There do appear to be three uh, people that are kind of off on their own too, a ways away from the fortune teller. Um, and it looks like the in inner lining of their cloaks is purple. Like if you were to reverse it, um, it might be a purple cloak. I'm gonna tap Isaac on the shoulder and it'll... Uh, nobody else has come in here yet, right? Uh, just you three. From my party, you? okay. Yeah, no one's entered since. Um, we all came in at about the same time. You came in maybe a minute before they did. Okay, well, I would have stood inside the door to survey. I wouldn't have taken a table or a booth. I would have been waiting. Um, so as they come in, after noticing that, I'll tell one of them to go right, one of them to go up the middle, and then I'm going to take the left. Isaac up the center. What are we doing? I point out the people sitting at the table with the cloaks that appear to be purple on the inside and how they could be the people we were chasing before. So I'll let you take point and confront them. Ethel and I will stop the exits. 
Uh, it's pretty. It's like eleven, right? Yeah. All right. I kind of I nod, but I have this big, big yawn. <sighs> gotta do. Gotta do. And as we're walking over, I'm just gonna bust any all the rest of my lay on hands on myself because I, I slap in the face a little. Something. I, I gotta. Come on, bud. Take at least one hit. And put the rest of my lay on hands on myself. Cop-o'd. It should give me at least a small buffer if this goes south. Oh, wait, so you pointed out that they might be fell hoods, right? Yeah. Alright. Is there a free seat at their table? Uh, there is uh, three of them, actually. It's a six seated table, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna sit down, and I'm gonna motion over for Ithil and Jun to come sit. I remain standing. Ithil would follow. Oh, good evening, uh, gentlemen. How's your, uh, how's your night treating you? Um, we're doing fine. How, how can we help you, um, sir? Oh, I'm here on some, uh, local business. I, uh, been charged with uh, finding uh, several gentlemen wearing uh, purple cloaks in this area. They've been uh, have, having some trouble. Uh, would you see anybody in that description? Are you talking about fell hoods? They kind of lean in. They don't look like they're being, like, malicious. It just sounds like they're trying to keep their voices low. Yeah. The, uh, the order. The order is looking for fell hoods. We used to run with them, sir. We used to run with them, but we don't run with them anymore. Not after what they did out there. We uh, we left about a week, about a six day ago, and we just uh, you know we've been in town, um, and we've been trying to find some honest work, but uh, we haven't been we haven't been running with them. We know that they're in the swamp, the uh, that swamp on the border. What's it called again? Uh, I don't remember. It's one of those. It's it's just, it's just Sheeny's name. I don't remember. You know the one though, right? Yeah, yeah, Chattahoochee. Oh, sure. And he kind of looks. <laughs> the other, this other one goes. Look, look, they had a they had a cave out there, and, and they were doing some really evil stuff. And we're just not. I mean, if we're gonna rob people, we're gonna rob people. We're not gonna try and kill them. You know what I mean? I mean, we 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 used to run in Stormloft, and you know, we made our way out this way ever since. You know, um, that king's been kind of losing his mind, but we we had it out this way and. It just hasn't been good, man. They they were dealing with some evil shit. Some evil shit. It was crazy what they like were doing. What? Enlighten me. There was a guy who... Uh, he wasn't a fellhood. Uh, he's some guy... He cut his hand and his blood turned black. And they were planting these mushrooms that they were selling to folks. And I mean, I'm all... I mean, whatever. Whatever you want to put in your body. If it comes from the earth, it comes from the earth. But they are putting something else in it, man. It was weird. I don't even know. And the guy kind of... Slams his hand on the table and he says, "Look, we're not with them. We'll give you any information you want. We're not with them. Okay? We do get up to some banditry. If that's enough to take us in, take us in. But we're not killers. We're not murderers. And we're not involved in that kind of sick stuff." Are you going to be civil? Are you taking us in? Are you going to be civil? Well, I'm asking you if you're taking us in. If yes, if that's the answer is yes, then yeah. I mean, we'll try and be civil. Sure. Okay. All I'm going to ask you to do, stand up. Okay. Take off your robes. Uh-huh. We're going to get rid of those first. Then we're just, I'm not taking you in, but I want you to put put this in writing for the law. Okay. Well, we this, your whole story. We every detail you got. We don't have any other cloaks though, man. This it's getting cold in the nights. We can't What are we going to do? Like if you're wanting us to leave our cloaks with you, we it's all we got. That's why we turned them inside out. We don't want to be affiliated with that shit. But it's yeah, the well, I spotted it across the room. Other people are going to see it too. Sit by the fire. Listen, we're, we'll take you in for the night. All right. We'll make sure they put you up. I've been there. It's a pretty nice room. They'll put you up. They'll keep you warm. In the morning, we'll have cloaks brought to you. Nice, clean ones, fresh, no colors at all. Then you go find some real work. Yeah, that's what we've been doing here. But it, all it is is fisherman work. It's it's a bunch of shit. There's nothing to do here, man. All right. Well, I, I've got some connections. I'll hook you up. But first, I need you to go in and put all this in writing for me. Give every name, every detail you can find, 
spend the night everyone around you inside and the bandit you're talking to all kind of look towards the door um and if you were kind of not paying attention to the bandit specifically everyone's starting to look at the door um and you see that the um uh a very strange sight to be sure uh is entering into the tavern the elf from the uh, crooked tower is walking into this tavern in the middle of the night I continue to give no shit and just tell these guys just we're gonna go walk over there we're gonna get rid of those we can wear them until we get there they'll put you up keep you warm for the night just every single detail you can give us on the fella just put it in writing okay 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 give us a pen and some pa- or uh, yeah pen and some paper we'll write what we have to they should have that like at the place right yeah well, you're, t- you're you're trying to take them back to the dungeon, like in the c- castle. No, is there nothing out here like that? Oh, like the guard? Are you trying to take them to the guard? Yeah, just somewhere to put them up, and I keep them warm, so I can get oh, the cloaks off. If you're saying like, they've got rooms here, they're just saying like they don't want to get rid of their cloaks without okay, the promise of future cloaks. You said you're going to give I don't, them future that's fine. cloaks. I just I I don't want them to bolt. No, they're not going to bolt. So like they All they right. they give you the cloaks, they start writing. If them they're there. on the level, then yeah, they start I'll hook them up with folks from wherever writing there and they and they lost and found are talking amongst themselves about this elf who just walks up to this the bar and sits at a stool i don't give a shit about that elf i just want these notes yeah everyone else in the tavern besides you though does care about that elf and is super pumped that he's there a couple of them are walking over and going oh master glenodal master glenodal you've come out of your tower to bless us and he's just like i'm waiting for a friend Elves don't have friends. Am I, am I his friend? Is he waiting for me? Go ask him. Do you walk over to him? Hell yeah! It looks like Jun's taking care of stuff here. He uh looks at Ithel you. Ithel would go. Yeah. Yeah, he looks at you and he goes, "Ah, huh, Lady Ithel, uh, Sir Woods, uh, how goes it?" Oh, you know. <laughs> Just dancing on the verge of death. Nothing, uh, nothing new for us. And where's Dim's best? Is he with you? Unfortunately, uh, Master Dim's best had to return to his uh, archaeological findings, his dig site. They require him urgently. But I heard you dealt with the dragon Freemus with his assistance. A, a great boon, if I. Um do say so. The Lord has rewarded you, I hope, with some sort of gift or token of his appreciation. Yes, we've been uh, given the titles of magistrate Perfect. in this uh, small region. So you plan on staying about. That's wonderful. He smiles and kind of keeps looking towards the door as he's talking to you guys. What brings you out of your tower from well, what I've gathered? It's uh, very, very rare that you uh, ever come amongst the common folk. I am waiting for a friend. Anyone we might know? I doubt it. Um, you might have... Try us. I've, I'm well-traveled. All the way from Assyria, you see, I've met many folk. Well, he's more regionally based, so a foreigner might not know who he is, but he should be here in, in short order. Um, he kind of smiles, and then he, like, as he's looking over, he kind of turns back and looks to the corner where the uh, fortune teller is, and, uh, he kind of narrows his eyes. Hmm. If I would go to the fortune teller and have a seat. Yeah, you sit across from her. She looks at you. I'd put a silver down on the table. Your fortune. I'd say, go ahead. Your fortune again. No, no, uh, I'm just, just thinking that the page of stones... You said? Yes. Tell me more. <laughs> so you're wanting to have a reading specifically about that portion of your reading? Yes, that's right. Can a reading change? It's not so much that it changes, you're specifying a specific aspect of it, milady. Not that it would change, but huh. it specific. It's more specific. What do you, you want? You said to- that I would see the quest as a burden, and I'd be laid low or humbled. Ah, uh, 
I, I do not forget my own words, but um, I, I ask you, what specifically do you want to know about that? Do you wish to know the method of your being laid low, or...? Uh, yes. Interesting. So focused on the problems, and not so much on the quest itself. Fair enough. She looks down at her cards as she throws out three uh, from the Major Arcana. So it would seem. Somewhere where there is water present. Somewhere where a ferryman might be present. Something to do with magic or the Feywild. And someone who is by itself. A creature that is all on its own. If my reading serves me properly, I would suppose that uh, if you were to stand against a green dragon in a swamp, lake, or bay, you might meet your end. Let's, dun, dun, dun. let's see what the oh. miner has to say. And she flips the table. Ah, the Jack of Wands, the Queen, and the King of Swords. Ah, the King of Swords. Your possible termination at the hands of this supposed dragon or hmm, whatever it might be if you were to find someone who was the jack of clubs cannot be ignored though the jack of wands a young wizard a young wizard with a fanciful persuasion someone who as an entertainer, not unlike myself, and a sword. I do not know what it means by the sword, or the one who would wield it, but it would seem that fate, as it were, has something to do with you and dealing with this dragon. Does this sound like it might be something that affects you very possibly i'm gonna need to give this lots of thought you hear a loud bang outside and kind of a sound kind of like a burst of a firework you're not sure quite what it is the second it happens the elf goes ah he's finally here and you see another explosion just outside the door like someone lit off a firework right on the street and behind, or in front of that firework, is the silhouette of what appears to be a wizard. And that is where we'll end the session for today. I teed it oh, up. Hold up, don't do it. Oh, what, what? I'm going to tell these guys to make a second copy. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot about the, uh, the laborious um, uh, uh, paperwork. Yeah, they make a second copy, sure. Yeah. So I keep one copy for myself. I seal the other one. I remove a bag from my pouch. I send it and the letters. I seal those up in a container together, wherever I can find. Supply them with three cloaks and tell them to meet Charlie back in my Do you town. have three cloaks on you? I'll acquire them from wherever. No. I'll buy them off the fisherman. It's the middle of the night, and no one's, buy them from the no one's selling you their cloak in the middle They're of the night. <laughs> That's not happening. Make a persuasion check. You managed to get one cloak. You guys can share it. <laughs> well, we can't. We're gonna... They're warm. For... Oh, yeah, they're staying here for the night anyway. Yeah. I just want them to leave in the morning. I right. give them enough to buy two cloaks out in the market, whatever. Sure. And they say thank you. And they'll continue looking for honest work. Does anybody no, have... No, hold on. Okay. I give them a name, Charlie. I tell them to travel back to my town. I can't remember the name of it now. City. I've written down somewhere. The city. City. Drayans. Dra See, I knew it sounded like dragon. So I tell them to go to Drain to meet with, well, we'll say Charlie. It'll be a name that someone they can easily find tied to the Mardigans, but that wouldn't be known as tied to the Mardigans. Sure. Like an, like an outside contract similar to myself. Anybody else have any busy work they want to do before the end of it? No. Oh, that was a sweet ending. It was supposed to leave this on a was... stinger, that beautiful... You... Oh! Yeah, I don't care about that, though. I teed that up, man. Oh, man. I'm sorry so... to continue that, but... Uh... Go for Cypress it. Cypress forgot to follow who he was supposed to follow. Uh, 
you have any idea where where you think he is right now? I uh, think I might have followed Lance. Let's say. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, roll. <laughs> I, I'm just glad I got into the city. No, no. Do me a favor. Roll me a D twelve. Okay. Two. Okay. So when you guys enter into the uh, the guardhouse, you're still at the gate. Lance, <laughs> this, this <would> be good. <laughs> Lance stayed there for a while and said, "Okay." Um, and, and Morris stayed there for a while as well. And you kind of between the two, we're kind of you know trying to pay attention to who to stay with. And then Morris kind of said, "You can come with me. We'll meet up with your friends in the morning. I don't think you'll be too well liked in the tavern." And you guys stay in the guard barracks that night. Oh, that's nice. Cool. Tired as you are. That's all I wanted. That bag I took from the cave, though. Uh huh. One pound of mushrooms and a weird heart with a letter A carved into it. Yeah. All of that, plus a copy of everything that was happening in those caves, is going to get make it to the Mardigans. Okay. Are you giving it to them to do that? I'm ha Yeah, I'll pay them to deliver it to name not necessarily associated, but it, so it gets to them. I understand that. That is actually that is actually relatively important. So the bag, yeah, so, so the thought. note. And the like are sent off with them, and they will leave in the morning. Got it? And they say, "Yeah." And um, they said, "Do you think Charlie will have more work for us?" Oh, I'm sure Charlie's going to have something for you. Awesome. And they nod their heads. Yeah, we're into this. This is our kind of. This is our kind of deal. Yeah, okay. The Mar out of character. The Margins are totally going to kill those three. <laughs> Possibly. Um, oh, all right. look, he, he just shipped us three fell hoods. Neat. Anything else you guys have um, before I end the stream? Silhouette of a wizard. Wait, so when yes. you say silhouette of it, it was like the firework came off and the door I'm, of the thing I'm gonna, opened. I'm going like, to end, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna end the stream and then I'll explain a little bit more after. It's fine. So. Ruined it. <laughs>